Um, we are all coming from a uh, five day of uh, fasting. And who many have joined any of those uh, five days or the entire five days? Okay, great. Um, I was told uh, that uh, our prayer meetings the past couple of days uh, were well attended. Uh, and I, I'm just really praying that, you know, um, those five days will, be so, uh, will, will mark uh, every single one of us. And um, it's not just... When I say mark every single one of us, I'm not just talking about the Lord answering our prayers, but I'm just praying that uh, those five days of prayer and fasting uh, would uh, perhaps um, help us uh, sustain okay, a deeper walk with the Lord. Amen? All right. Um, uh, I'm coming from a conference, okay, the Every Nation Campus Conference um, of North America. So I went there together with some of our pastors and um, there are so many great things that are happening when it comes to campus ministry uh, in the USA right now. Uh, we were there to observe. We were there to, uh, to minister to many students. Um, and I tell you what, it's like, you know, if we, if we look at campus ministry in the Philippines and the things that we're doing here, um, basically we understand one thing, that the things that are happening in, the, in North America will basically uh, be, uh, you know, present in the coming years in the Philippines. So that's how crucial... Um, it is to do campus ministry uh, in the USA, all right? And uh, lastly, I want to show you this photo, okay? Um, if you guys know Charmaine, all right? So Charmaine, okay, um, you know, Eurasian Charmaine just had a baby, okay? Um, her name is Ivy, okay? Uh, so I, I forgot the complete name, uh, the, 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 the first name, I forgot, but she's called Ivy. So if you see Charmaine around, okay, and Eurasian around, please congratulate them, Okay, um, the Lola is here, si Lola, si Lola Edith is here. So yeah, so congratulations to the Gonzaga family, right? So uh, turn your Bibles with me for about to Psalm 96. Again, to Psalm 96. So today, uh, we are starting a new series, okay? So um, like, what, like what Kevin was saying a while ago, um, the series is in line with our prayer and fasting. And it's called Set Apart, okay? So it's called Set Apart. And it's not, it's not like, you know, it's not going to be like a book study. Uh, it's not like we're gonna uh, we're gonna come on the book of Matthew. So we're 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 going to look into different um, texts or different passages, different books. Uh, the next coming Sundays. Today we'll start with a Psalm, okay? And specifically, okay, specifically the Psalm 96. Okay, so uh, this this uh, this new series that we're having set apart. Okay, is our is our audio okay? Uh, people at the back can hear me well. Okay, great. Um, uh, this basically will, uh, our, our goal here is to highlight and understand how holy God is. All right? So that's basically what we want to do. All of us, let's all stand at our feet for a while. Psalm 96. Uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read the entire, okay, the entire chapter. And many of you know that a psalm, okay, is a poetry. All right? A psalm is a song. All right? So, in reality, okay, the best way to read this is to sing this. Okay? Sensya na kayo. Hindi ako makanta, so we'll read it. Okay? Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless His name. Tell of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods, all the Elohims of the people are worthless idols. But the Lord made heavens and splendor and majesty are before Him. Strength and beauty are in His sanctuary. Ascribe then to the Lord, O families of the people, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to His name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world, yet the, yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will, be, he will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for He comes, for He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness, and the peoples in His faithfulness. Let's all pray. 
our words, God, our time, our understanding will never suffice, Lord. Uh, Lord, as, we're, as we look into this psalm, specifically, Lord, this, Lord, Psalm 96, there is just no way for us to fully grasp uh, what this is talking about, Lord, in its entirety. But I pray, Lord, that even just a fraction, Lord, even just a portion, Lord, of, of what it is saying, Lord, will be imparted to every single one of us here today. Lord, that we will all understand how a high view of your holiness will change our lives from the inside out. God, I pray, Lord, that for many of us, Lord, who've been walking with you, who've been in this church for many, many years, and Lord, we have been so casual, Lord, in our understanding of your holiness. God, I pray today, Lord, that you will change these mindsets that we have. Lord, that you will cause us, Lord, to, Lord, you will cause our eyes, Lord, to be open. Just as Isaiah, Lord, was confronted, Lord, by your holiness. And it resulted, Lord, to his repentance. And it resulted, Lord, to him being an empty vessel, Lord, for your use. And so, God, today, as we look at this specific psalm, Lord, as we look at Psalm 96, whether some of us here, God, Lord, are new believers, whether some of us here, Lord, have been invited for the first time, whether some of us here, Lord, are, are, are skeptics, or some of us here have been walking with you for the longest time, God, I pray, Lord, that this will be a blanket uh, truth for every single one of us that we will all respond individually and corporately, Lord, to the splend, Lord, uh, respond, Lord, to the splendor of your holiness. Lord, we bless your name in this place. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can all be seated now. Okay. Um, you know, I was, I was working on this yesterday, and I feel like I have so many things to say, so, so we'll see. All right? So, um, okay. Let me put it this way. Um, I want to focus on just a few things, okay, um, as we look at the Psalm 96. And I want to ask, I want to start this by asking a question. I want you to, 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 think, uh, to think with me for a while, and, and I bet you would agree with what I'm going to say. Um, and here it is. Um, there aren't too many social settings. There aren't too many social settings when people come together to regularly sing the same song. What do you guys think? Let me repeat that. I think there aren't too many social settings when people come together regularly to sing the same songs. Now, for our foreigner friends here, you know, Filipinos, we love video, okay? like KTVs and stuff like that. But even if we sing the same songs in, uh, in, in whatever, uh, in, ano pang, ano pang iba? Top hits, okay? All of those places. We don't do that regularly, isn't it? What do you, think, what do you guys think? If you attend a concert, okay? If you attend a concert, what's the recent concert we had in the Philippines? Anyone? No, I don't know. Okay, so when you attend a concert, perhaps the, perhaps the, you know, the singer would ask the audience to sing along, okay, to sing along, uh, to sing the song with him. Okay, that happens, but it doesn't happen regularly, right? So there aren't too many social settings when people come together to sing regularly and frequently the same songs other than corporate worship on a given Sunday. You guys agree with me? Does that make sense? What do you guys think? Right? So, other than corporate worship, the difference between a corporate worship, okay, what is a corporate worship? This is a corporate worship. Okay? So, uh, I, I feel like I need to explain a few things. Corporate worship is that we come together, we gather together to worship. 
your quiet time, your devotions at home, those are your individual worship. But this one is a corporate one. The difference between a corporate worship like this and a concert out there in Manila, okay, the difference is if you, if you come here every single Sunday, okay, you don't sing to someone on the stage. No matter, no matter, how, no matter how you love uh, you know, Grace or Adonis leading us in worship, but at the end of the day, you don't sing to them, isn't it? I mean, this sounds so basic, but I'm, I, I have a point to make here. Um, you do that in concerts, you sing along with the one who's singing, but not in the church. So today, what I want to accomplish to do here this, this morning is, I want us to understand, or I want to prove to every single one of us here this morning, that coming together for corporate worship as Christians should be non-negotiable. It has to be non-negotiable. So, I want to prove to you why coming for corporate worship on the Lord's Day every single Sunday is not about you. It's not even about your preference. It's not about the ashers, not about the tech, not about the worship leader. It's not about any of us. I want to prove to you here this morning that coming together on a given Sunday is extremely integral for your growth if you are truly serious about your growth as a Christian. And I pray that beginning today, okay, and the succeeding years of your life, you will never skip corporate worship and you will make that so part of your life. So here's the question that I have. Why do we sing? Have you ever thought of that? I mean, you know what? Um, the first Christian church that I've ever attended is actually Victory. Before Victory, I mean, I was just a lost kid. I don't have any exposure to Christians, never had Christian friends. And I feel like, you know, when, when I joined this church, I don't know, um, in 2002, 2002, yeah? When I joined, no, 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 2003, Sorry, 2004, <laughs> okay? When I joined his church in 2004, um, that's how I've seen it. Like, um, someone comes up, someone, someone tells everyone, hey, this is called to worship. And then they, I, I specifically know this. In the church, they sing four songs before the sermon. Some of, you, some of you might be surprised that we just sang two songs a while ago. So, I, 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 I want to I wanna break this down for us. And it's actually good for us to ask questions. Why do we sing? Why do we sing? I mean, can we listen to the preaching of your word without singing? What do you guys think? I think so. So why do we sing? I want you to turn your Bibles forward to Psalm 96. Look at Psalm 96. I want us to look at verses 1 to 3. Look at verse one, verses 1 to 3 right there. I want to read it for everyone. Look at this. Okay, um, I'll read verses 1 to 3, and I'll show you something. It says here, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless His name. Tell of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous works among all the peoples. I'll stop there. Now look. In just three verses, I want you to look at this. In just three verses, there were, or rather, there are six commands. All right? In three verses, there are six calls or six commands. And I want you to, sing, to, to look at this with me. What's the first one? Go, I, okay, here we have the, all three verses. What's the first one? Oh, all right, look at this. God's people, God's people, I, I, want, I want you to think about this. God's people, first and foremost, were asked to sing. All right? They were asked to sing. And then, sing to the Lord a new song. And then it says here, what's the next one? Sing. Sing. Who's going to sing? All the earth. That's the second one. And next one, it says, sing. All right? So you have sing, sing, sing. All right? 
in, 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 those, in those just two verses, we, we were asked to sing. Okay, the next one is to what? To bless His name. Right? Someone approached me last time and asking me, um, what do you mean by bless God's name? Isn't it that, that it's God who blesses us? To bless God's name simply means to worship Him, to exalt His name, to make His name so, uh, so much higher than any other names in your personal life. So, we're asked to sing, 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 bless. Then look at this. It says here, you're asked to, we're asked to what? Come on now, to, to tell. To tell, right? To tell of his salvation from day to day. And then what? To, to declare his glory among the nations. Interesting, isn't it? Right? So what the psalmist was telling every single one of God's people is, hey, uh, here's the call for you. What's our call? He says, sing. What's the next one? Sing. What's the third one? Sing. Then he says, bless his name. Then he says, tell. Tell about his salvation. Next one, declare. Right? It's interesting that we are asked to what? God's people at this junction were asked to sing, sing, and sing. Let me go to the first one. Look at this one. What are we going to sing? All right? What are we to sing? I mean, for friends, I'm just, I'm just on the verses right here. What are we to sing? We're to, look at the first one. It says, we sing a... Oh, interesting. Interesting, isn't it? You and I... You and I are asked by God to sing a new song. Tell your me for about sing a new song. All right. Let's bring this down to every single one of us here today. As I was looking at this, I realized that the words sing a new song occurs, okay, occurs nine times in the Bible. Nine times in the Bible. Sing a new song. So when you look at the words, when you look at the phrase, when you look at the phrase, sing a new song, okay, uh, it appears nine times littered all over scriptures. And most often, if you look at that, it's used to describe a new experience. So when you encounter the words, when you encounter the word, sing a new song, it's always used or it is a response over people's or individuals' new experiences with God. So it's like if you, if you go to God's Word, it's like this. God healed you. Sing a new song. See? That's a song. God rescued you. Sing a new song. God healed you, God redeemed you, God saved you, sing a new song. That's what the Bible teaches us. So every time, every time there's like a new testimony in your life, the Lord actually asks us to sing a new song in response to His goodness and faithfulness in our lives. Folks, listen. I want you to understand this. Does it say, does it say, um, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, music team. Does it say, oh, sing to the Lord a new song, uh, Kathleen? So, oh, 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 sing to the Lord a new song, songwriters? Are you folks with me? Oh, sorry. My preaching coach told me not to say that. Okay? Not to say, are you folks with me? Is that making sense? Because he'll be listening. <laughs> so it's a blanket statement for people who, con- who considers themselves a member of the people of God. All right. I, I, wanna, I, I, want, us, I want us to see this. Um, the first song found in God's Word, okay, turn your Bibles farewell. I don't have it here, sorry. Turn your Bibles farewell to Exodus. Look, look, go to Exodus. Okay, for, for our new friends here in the church, Exodus is the second book of your Bible. Just, just go, past, uh, go past Genesis and you'll get to Exodus. Go to Exodus chapter 15. I'll wait for you to be there, right? So, 
Exodus chapter 15, are you guys there? Exodus 15? Okay, now, the first, the first poetic couplet in God's word is found in Genesis. Okay? And it was by Adam, when Adam said, Hey, uh, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. That's the first poetic couplet. But the first song, I want you to understand, this is, in, this is extremely important. This is extremely important. The first song that you will find in God's word is actually in Exodus chapter 15. Are you guys there? Okay. Here's how it ought to be read. KB, can you please stand for a while? Okay, you asked KB to do this. Okay, she didn't rehearse for this, but this is how, this is how you read the first two verses. Go, go ahead, KB. Just, just, just tell me. I will sing to the Lord, for He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider He has thrown in the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song And He has become my salvation This is my God, I will praise Him My Father's God, I'll exalt Him Alright, great. Pwede pala pa natin si That's how it should be read, actually. Because, like what I said, it's a song. The first song is found in Exodus chapter 15. And I simply asked KB last night, hey, uh, yes, sir, do, hey, can you sing this uh, uh, tomorrow in our, in, our, in our corporate worship? That's, that's how it is. Now, now, that's a slow one. I, I, I actually do not know how the, it was sung. Okay, the, we don't have any Spotify recording. Perhaps it was sung as a fast song. But here's my question for you. What's the context of that? Why, why were they singing? I mean, just, just look at the verses prior to that. Why, why were they singing? Why, why, why did they start singing? The song of Moses, of all people, Moses starts singing right here. What's the context of that? I mean, just, just, just read the, the, the verses, like 10 verses up. What, what happened there? The Lord rescued them. Right after crossing, right after the Exodus, the moment they landed their feet in that place, Right when the Lord rescued them from the chariots of the pharaohs of Egypt, they burst out in song, friends. It's a new song. So, if you follow the pattern, I mean, just follow the pattern. I look at this, and here's what it means. God's people, okay? God's people, everybody say God's people. God's people in the olden times, okay? This is, this is how it looks like. God's people always respond to God's goodness and God's mercy with psalms and prayer. And it's interesting because if you want a formula for this, here's what it looks like. New things always equals to new songs. I want you all to close your, your eyes for Just close your eyes for a while. Okay? In the next 15 seconds, I want you to think about one, two, or three things that you are thankful to God for the past year. All right. Great. When we had one, at least one. Uh, sorry, you can open your eyes now. When we at least had one, you're... you're th- you're thankful to God for this one thing or, or two things, three things. All of us, right? Okay. <laughs> I, know, I know it's kind of, it's you know, it's a, it's a bit dumb for us to, 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 to talk about something that's extremely obvious, but it's something like this. It tells us then, if I look at those verses, Exodus chapter 15, Psalm 96, it tells me then that if there are no new songs, then there are no new things happening in your life. Let me repeat that. If your lips, your mouth, haven't been, if our mouths haven't been 
bursting with new songs, then are you folks telling me that God isn't doing anything new in your life? I beg to disagree. Because a lot of times, we don't see the new things that God is doing in our life because we're not paying attention. Is God a redeeming God? What do you guys think? Okay, is God a rescuing God? All right, just just answer yes or no. Is God... um, is God a, let me see, a, a healing God? Is God a healing God? Does God heal both physical ailments and even mental problems? Is God good? Now, here's my next question. Does God sing? Is God a singing God? Friends, you know what? You have to believe me this, this morning. You know why? Because I am not a singer. I mean, I'm not a singer. Malakas lang po ang loob kong kumanta pagkasama ko kayo. Kasi natatabunan yung boses ko. So, I'm talking about songs. You're, you're, you're getting something about songs from someone who's not even, who's not, who doesn't even know one chord. We can't even dis- distinguish melodies and stuff like that. So is God a singing God? Look at Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Okay, I'll go there. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Okay, um, I- I'll read this for everyone, okay? So that... I know you're confused where Zephaniah is. Don't worry. I'll read this for you. Okay? I, want you to, I want you all to listen to this. The Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty one who will save. Like, like what you said, he's a saving God, isn't it? Right? He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you over, he will exalt over you with, come on now, with a loud singing. You may not know this, but your parents' voice while they were singing for you when you were an infant, calm down your tantrums. And God said, in the midst of your trouble, He sings over you. To calm your soul, to usher in His peace. It's true that God is a worshiping God, is a rescuing God, but a God that we serve, friends, is a singing God. In Scripture, you have like, you know, the experience of the prophet Isaiah and, you know, the, the cherubims, the seraphims. What were they doing gathering around God? They were what? They were singing. So what I'm trying to say here is this. When we engage in worship, okay? When we, when we engage in singing, okay? When you're not just, what was the first song a while ago, sorry? My God. My God. Okay? When, 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 all, when, when the rest of us were singing, my God, when you're just doing like this, <laughs> and then you're, you're like on your phone, when you're disengaged in worship, Let me put it in a positive sense, like what my preaching mentor told me. When we're engaged in worship, when we do that, we're actually doing the natural expression of the human heart. Your natural response to God's goodness should be singing. Um, When I was a new Christian, Okay, um, you know, I, I became a Christian at a time where there were no smartphones, right? So, just so you would understand. And uh, my mom gave me this, like, 
very small stereo. And I remember every Sunday at 4 in the morning, Sunday 4 in the morning, there's this one FM station in Dumaguete that would play uh, worship songs at 4 in the morning. So the time set was like 4, I forgot, 45 or 40, 4.30. So in my, in, my, in, my, in my apartment, the problem with that stereo is that that's an old one. It's, like, it's, it's a very old one. I don't know where that stereo is. So sometimes to get a good reception, you have to put it on a certain angle. So remember, when I was a growing Christian, when I was a new Christian, I would wake up at 4 in the morning, and I will try to like hold that song while I'm sleeping. I mean, that stereo while I'm sleeping. Just to be able to listen to a song. And I know you have your own experiences. You have your own, quote-unquote, favorites. Um, every, at the Every Nation World Conference, okay, it was attended by people from, from different nations. And I realized that music, there's this one song, there's this one African song from Every Nation called Bayete. And no one even knows what it means other than the South Africans. But every time the song was played, every time the song was played, and people, and the, the Africans were, were singing, Bayerthe, Bayerthe, and stuff like that. Their voice were better. Okay? When they were singing, Bayerthe, and stuff like that, for some reason, you know, the, 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 the Americans, you know, the Europeans, the Filipinos, every single one were singing along with them, even if they don't understand what the word means. Why? Because music transcends ethnicity and races. In fact, many of you have forgotten so many of the preachings here, but you don't forget songs. Because at the end of the day, music, friends, is the language of the heart. Um, do you ever find yourself you know, coming to a point in your life where in some cases you just cannot express what you have in your heart? Is there, is there someone who's like that? Okay, I'm the only one, right? Anyway, my point, if, if, if you would have said yes, my point there was, okay, I always feel like an odd one, okay, every time I, I talk about some of these things. So, music allows us to express the interior and incommunicable longings that we have in our hearts. For some reason, you feel, like, you, you feel like you're out of words, but music gives you the avenue to pull out what's in there and give it to the Lord. That's why we sing. That is why we sing. Um, if I mentioned a while ago that, you know, new experiences always results to new songs, then don't you think that it goes on to say then that our worship should not be stale? Anyone here uh, who's watched a Manny Pacquiao fight when you were like many, like, like a decade ago? You, you, you know the thrill of it. Okay, you, you, right? Okay, let's, let's change. What's your favorite team? All right, bala kayo. Okay. My point here is, if you, if you look at this, it tells us then that if new experiences result in new songs, then when you come here for corporate worship, our worship should not be introverted. Hey, friends, you don't come here, you don't come here on a given Sunday and think and worship on your own thinking that it's just you and God. No, you are with the rest of us. And therefore, your worship should be expressive. Your worship should not be stale. You don't dare cross your arms before the presence of God in singing. You don't dare come here. If, we, if you've been a church member for quite some time, now this is for you. This is not for our new friends here. But you don't dare come here 
and be so disengaged with worship just because your favorite song isn't being played. Because like what I said, it's not about you. Because you're not doing this for me. You're not doing this for any of the people we're seeing here. Folks, you're right before the presence of God. I'm going to talk about that in a while, um, some more. Um, when, when we sing, I want you to understand, when we sing, it is, it is an act of faith. It is an act of faith. You know why? You know why singing is an act of faith? Because you're not singing to the air. And the other thing is, you don't see the person to whom you are singing to. It's an act of faith. And I want you to understand something happens when we come together to worship. I remember during my wedding day, my dad at that point yet, 2010, my dad wasn't a Christian yet. And they were, my, my dad was opposed to the idea of, of a garden wedding. Like why, why do we have to wear uh, you know, uh, coat and tie in a garden setting? Actually, it makes sense. Okay, in, in a Philippine tropical climate. I was like, that's what victory does. <laughs> My dad was supposed to that, and, and, and when, 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 during, during the march, you know, the, the, the band started playing at the cross and stuff like that. Everyone started worshiping. I remember my dad inclining towards me and telling me, hey, Archie, sabi niya, iba pala to. It was like saying, this is different. It moved him. You know why? Because worship is an act of faith. That's why you don't just sing, sing, sing. You also tell and declare. Listen, if you look at verse 2, can you, can you pull out verse 2 for a while? Look at verse 2. Look at this. Sing to the Lord, bless His name. Look at this. One. Tell of His salvation from day to day, to day. Look at verse 2. It says here, declare His glory. Declare His glory among the nations. Interesting. A new song, friends, is a proclamation. A new song is a declaration. A new song is a what? A new song is a preaching in itself. That is why the content of our song actually matters. You know, the word proclaimed there is, um, okay, that's declare. Um, the, the, the other translation of it is the word proclaim. And that is actually the word bazaar in its original Hebrew. And that, is, that, that actually means to tell of the good news. To tell of the good news. Interesting. So when, we, when, when you experience God, when you, when you encounter God, remember your victory weekend. Remember the day that you got saved. Remember those times that you know that some, you know, I feel like God is doing something in my life. If, if, if you come to think about that, you experience God, you burst out in a new song. But it is not just about what you feel. But it's about what? The declaration of the truth of who God is. You know why? Because here's how it looks like. If songs are just about what you feel, then the content of our song, the lyrics of our song, will be like this. Lord, I love you. 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 Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. But it's not just about what you feel. It's about what you and I declaring the truth of who God is. Because a lot of times, I want you to understand this in your Christian walk, things won't fall right in place for you. There's going to be a problem tomorrow, Monday. So if you base your songs on what you feel, you're telling God right now, I love you. And then you're going on Tuesday and telling God something happened in school, something happened in the office, something happened in your business. And you're telling God, Lord, I am disappointed with you. It's not about what you feel, but it's about what? The declaration of who God truly is. That in, the, that in the midst of cancer, you understand the truth of God's word says, Jesus is our healer. That in the midst of bankruptcy, you understand that God is a provider. So it's poetry and theology combined together to exalt and glorify the name of God. Our new songs are not just things that we feel about our situations right now. But our singing is also a proclamation of what is true. 
If you're in a difficult circumstance right now, that's what you feel. You can create a song about it. But don't you dare forget to embed what the Word of God says about your situation right now. We combine those two things together. What do we proclaim? What do we proclaim? Look at verse 4. That's what you proclaim. Verse 4 says, For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, for uh, He is to be feared above all gods. So He says, as you, as you, as you, Think about new songs as you write new songs, as you sing new songs to God. Always think that Yahweh is totally different from all the Elohims in the world. You proclaim who God is. It says there, for great is the Lord. Amen. Great is the Lord over your circumstances right now. Great is the Lord over your sicknesses right now. Great is the Lord over your marital difficulties right now, over the relational dysfunctions that are happening in your life right now. Great is the Lord still. To my knowledge, all of our problems combined, you put it all together, that will never dethrone God. It will never dethrone the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 96 is a, is a powerful song that gives us a specific of who God is. That our song should be about Yahweh. Our song should be about God and what God has done in your life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I, the, the past few years, you know, we've been meeting with some of our friends here in the church and we've been telling each other, hey, let's, let's try to write songs. Let's try writing songs. And I know, I know you guys, some of you, you just write some, some things out there. I want you to understand this. When, when, you, when you sing new songs, make sure your new songs are not ambiguous. That when you sing that song to your friend, your friend's like, ah, who is that for? Is that for your girlfriend? Because it's so unclear to whom it is addressed to. Our folks following. Kung magsusulat ka rin naman pala ng song para kay Lord, make sure na rin na magigets ng mga nakakarinig na para kay Lord yan. You know what I love about this? Psalm 96 teaches us that when we sing new songs, it should celebrate the cross of Christ. Okay? I want you to understand this. When we sing new songs, it should be a song that celebrates the cross of Christ, but it is not detached from your current emotions. Look at verses 7 to 10. Ascribe to the Lord, O families, of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory to His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts, worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness, tremble before Him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns, yes, yes, the world is established, it shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Who is called to ascribe? Come on out. who is called to ascribe? Look at that. It doesn't just say nations, but families of nations. Families of nations. How many families are, present, are, are, are represented here today? Um, there's like, what, 300 plus of us? So you're considered as one. Look at this one. I, mean, I want you to look at the specifics of this. It doesn't say, it doesn't say, you know, ascribe to the Lord. It says, it doesn't say, ascribe to the Lord, O nations. It says, families of the peoples. You know what's interesting with that? It tells us then that John Angel's context is different from EJ's. EJ's context is different from Kevin's. Ryan's struggles are different from Keeney's. Keeney's joys are different 
from Kairos. What, what am I trying to say? We all come here together. Friends, we have different contexts, different stories. We have different silent struggles. We have different cries. We have different family backgrounds. Some of you here, uh, some of you here are coming from a broken home. Some of you here are coming from a happy family. Some of you here has so much in your pocket. Some of you here are coming with none in your pocket. Some of you here have, uh, are, are, are coming here and you don't know what's going to happen the next week. Some of you are coming and you're so assured with your job security. My point is, we all come together with different contexts, different stories to tell. But Psalm 96 teaches us that we may be different people, but we come together. We bring with us our, our own stories and bring together a collective worship before God. We bring our brokenness and we share our brokenness with each other in gathered and corporate worship and let those brokenness be what be an incense to the Lord. That we will praise Him while we're waiting for that long for that long for promotion. That we come together with, with different contexts, but we sing one song with a unified voice, with one spirit to the God, the creator of heavens and earth. New Testament teaches us that we are different bodies, isn't it? Right? Different parts of them, not different, but different parts of us. Some are like I, some are like hands, some are like what uh, feet. Who wants to be feet? Okay. Uh, some are like you know arms, hands. But New Testament teaches us that what Jesus is the the head. Oh, really? Jesus is the head. You know what it means when we come together in oneness of spirit, we sing and glorify God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just love how powerful this is. That's why I was telling you a while ago, I'm not, I'm, I'm not being a, 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 a fundamentalist here or what, but hey, I mean, think about this. So it tells me then that, you know, I have to come here prepared. I have to come here with a sense of excitement because I'm going to gather together with the rest of believers to worship God. I'm going to come here with my current emotions and yet I will sing before the Lord. I'm going to come here and I understand one thing. I will participate. I will participate in that singing. I will participate in that worship. I will participate in those praises. So, um, can you think about your favorite song for a while? Just favorite song, like, huh? Some of you are like, here's my favorite song, and this, this church, they haven't been singing this song for like five years. You know what it means? It it, it tells us simply that. You come here, you come here, and you will sing, regardless of what the song is. I don't know many of the songs. I look at the TV. I don't know the lyrics. Do you folks realize that when you come here, it's not just you and God? Duh. There's someone standing beside you. That's why it's corporate worship. You don't come here and say, ah, I'm not going to sing because it's not my, it's not my favorite song. Come on now. Take a step that attitude. Look at verse 11. This is interesting. A few more things. I'm going to end. How many minutes do I have? Oh, time's up. 
Look at verse 11, it says, sorry about that, but I'll, I'll try to be quick, okay? Look at 11 to 13. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for He comes, for He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the right and the people in His faithfulness. Who is being who is being asked to sing? Who is being summoned to sing? People, <laughs> friends, no. I mean, look at that. Look at verses eleven to thirteen. Who is being summoned to worship? Who's been singing, who, who's been summoned to sing? It's not people right here. It's the what? The trees, the rivers, the rocks. Oh, now I get it. No wonder. Jesus was like saying, if you don't praise God, the rocks will. If you keep shutting your mouth, the rocks will praise, the trees will praise, the, the, the roars of the sea will worship. This earth worships God. But it's interesting because I'm looking at this real wow. Creation itself is a language of praise and worship. You know what it tells me? You and I are part of something bigger. You're you think about your own brokenness and your it I don't know with you, but it teaches me, Psalm 96 teaches me that I cannot be too introspective. Have you ever ministered to someone and the person that you're talking to, he doesn't have an idea of the weight and the burden that you're currently facing? It's like saying, Hey, you know what? Hey, hey, bro, uh, I, I've lost five thousand yesterday. Five thousand pesos yesterday. And you're like, ah, okay, let's pray for that. And you don't even want to have 100 pesos in your pocket. We're part of something bigger. In fact, verses 11 to 13 teaches us that songs, when we sing, it, it, it unites every single one of us. When you sing, it unites you with a person seated beside you. But not just that, it also tells us that what? It unites us with the rest of the creation. I don't know with you, but I want you to understand this. All beauty, all beautiful things point to God. So next time you feel so comforted to see the trees waving or the deep blue ocean in Darwin or when you're diving, you see all the different species of fish out there and you, you go to the mountains, I want you to understand this. They are not just able to articulate it, but it is worship to the Lord, the creator of all things. And among all the created order, the one who has been gifted to be able to articulate it in words are people. Humans like you and me. Um, have you ever heard of the term already and not yet? It's like, it's like, hey, um, We've experienced the, the goodness of God. It's like we've experienced, we, we, we've, we've, we've experienced who Jesus is, but we haven't experienced the fullness of it yet. All right? We haven't experienced the fullness of it yet. So it simply means that if you are a Christian, you are like a kingdom outpost. Okay? You're like a kingdom outpost in a sense that you represent and tell the world about who Jesus is. Perhaps what you understand and what the people out there will understand is but a fraction of it. But it is through our songs that they will see and understand who this God that we worship is. Here's what a few things I'm, I'm going to end. Um, if you look at scriptures and you see what scripture tells us about worshiping God, Here's what you will understand. Here's what you will understand. And, and you can forget the many things that I've said, but don't forget this. You have no right 
to be silent in church. You have no right to be silent in church. Sorry, guys. You have no right to be silent in church. Angels are worshiping. Creation is worshiping. The command for you and for me is this. Lift up your voices. Tell your CP for well, lift up your voice. You know what's interesting? Uh, <clears throat> the nice thing about this is when we sing together, when we sing together, um, it sounds good. Right? I mean, when you sing on your own, uh, sometimes it doesn't sound quite good. But when we sing together, it sounds good. The Bible tells us to, to what? To lift our voices before God. In light, if you look at verses 11 to 13, in light of His judgment. And I want you to understand, God's judgment, or ju- rather, Jesus' judgment is actually a good thing. So as you look forward to that, currently, we have to sing. So, okay, um, I thought, uh, why are we talking about singing here? Why? Because this all boils down to what? This all boils down to what? To the holiness of God. Why do you sing? Because God is holy. Let, let me put it, can I, can I ask a piece of paper, any paper there? will find. Thank you. Um, let me put it this way and we're going to end. I'm going to call the music team for a while. Please join me for a while. Music team. Look at this one. You see how thin this is? You, 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 you all see how thin this is? Of course you do. Right? The distance, let's say, the distance between the earth and the sun is this paper right here. Right? Let me repeat that. The distance between the earth and the sun is this thin paper right here. Right? Catch that? If you try to imagine the distance between the earth, the earth and the nearest star, it would be what? 70 feet of this paper right here. Right? Earth to sun, one paper. The earth to the nearest star will be like 70 feet of this paper right here, higher than this building. And how many galaxies were there? Are there? How many galaxies are there? We don't know. Right? We don't know. So imagine the, imagine, the, imagine the breadth of this galaxies. I mean, imagine, imagine, ima- imagine, how, imagine how small everything is. All right? And how, how big everything is if you look at the galaxies. Now, here's what you want, I want us to understand. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us that Jesus holds, come on out, holds the universe in his hand then you come to him casually we come to him casually come on now we come to him casually the one who holds everything together the one who has power over everything then we cross our arms before him then you still come late for worship every single Sunday? Then you come here thinking all the volunteers should serve you? Set aside those attitude friends. Because only when you are confronted by the holiness of God will you change. I want to end this by saying this. And what I'm going to say next is entirely true. Alright? This is entirely true. 
And I want you to embrace this for the rest of your life. And here it is. If you're unaffected, if you are unaffected by the holiness of God, you will never have a sustained consciousness of the wonders of His redemptive work. You want to live a holy life? You want to live a set-apart life? Then understand first how holy God is. And give the worship and the praises that are due His name. Amen. Can I invite all of us to stand for a while? Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen? Come on, repeat those words again. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Yes, God. Lord, you deserve the highest praises, God. In the highs and in the lows. In all seasons of our lives, Lord. Lord, you deserve the praises, God. Come on, church. Let's pour out our hearts. Let's open our mouths without minding our seatmates. Come on. Lift your voices to God. Lord, let everything that is breath praise your name forever, God.
What the future brings, I will watch and wait for the Savior King. Then my joy complete, sending face to in this side of glory in this side of glory O Holy One we are wholly yours in the secrets Lord find us true we stand a pilgrim headed for you prone to wander remedied by endless wonder Lord bruise us with thorns if the world we begin to long let the furnace do its work on conflicts that we are yoked in the permanence of the divine God our journeys bind. The heavenly beauty of your majesty prompts us to bow our knees. Jesus, our noblest pleasure, our ultimate treasure, most gracious, most glorious, most holy, most worthy. We are wholly yours. We will worship you. We will not wait, Lord, for tomorrow to do what we should have done yesterday. We will worship you all day. We stretch our hands, raise worship that knows no end. Lord Jesus, we bless your name in this place. Holy Spirit, we exalt you in this place. Yahweh, Father God, creator of all things, initiator of all things. Jesus, our redeemer. Jesus, our rescuer. Holy Spirit, the one who's appropriated the truth of the gospel in our lives, triune God, we worship you today. We bless you today. We exalt your name today. We lift our hands before you in adoration, wonder, and awe. Because you alone deserve it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Can we just give God praises for a while? Come on out. Allow me to pray for everyone. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you, His countenance toward you, and give you shalom peace. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. In the mighty name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our Jesus Christ, amen and amen. God bless you, everyone.